Okay, so we're now into July and I'm, I'm up on the middle trend. Quite a well known weir pool, but I won't name it for specific guys' reasons. But I'm up here in July to do a short video on rolling meat. So I've had some really good feedback from the first video I did on the 16th. So I want to thank everybody that's that comments and sent me emails, etc. It's been really appreciated. And unfortunately, I haven't worked out how to reply to comments on YouTube, so please don't think I'm ignoring you. If, if you want to have some response from me, by all means, um, email me on my email from the website and that will be on the, on the end of this video so if you'll be able to do that. So what I want to do is show you how I do my rolling meat. So I got here last night, I uh, started at five, uh, I had been fishing particularly well for the guys that are on here, but I did manage to winkle out five. I had three tens and two singles, which I got a couple of photos of two of the tens, which I'll put on this video shortly. But for now, I'll just show you the rig that I use. It's very, very simple. So I've had a, a rod rerun. This was a this was a Free Spirit CTX cart rod, 2.75 test curve, 12 foot. And I've had it rerun perfectly now for, for fishing the rivers for barbel, and it suits my my need perfectly. You need quite a strong test curve, especially on the weir pools, to pull them away from the snags. Um, so I'm using this one at two and three quarters. Simple little Shimano reel, and I've got 15 pound Gardner Hydra Tough line as my main line. And then very simply, I'm experimenting with a few things and. Um, I've done it with three swan shot moulding plaster seen around them. And then at the moment I'm using this. So it's just a bullet lead with two little float stops so I can slide up and down the line if it gets caught on a snag. Straight through to a size six Gardner Talon tip hook. All very simple. And then I just take a piece of plaster seam and mould it around the lead like so. And the plaster seam serves two purposes. One of them obviously you get the additional weight which you do need and you soon find out how much you need after a couple of trots through. But secondly, yeah, perfectly round the lead like that, but secondly, when this gets caught on a rock, it will slide down to the hook, and then the blast seam will just simply break away like so. And then 99 times out of 100, you get everything back, which is essential that we don't leave rigs and bits of bobs in the river. So very, very simple, eight to 10 inches away from the hook, and that rolls down a tree. Bait, good old fashioned meat, I'm not going to pick this up because I've flavoured this with um, some oil and some other little bits of bob just to give it a little bit of a twist. But you can't beat it. Good old fashioned lunch of meat. Roll through this swim will catch you a lot of fish. So I had a 14 3 this morning. I'll pop that video up after this one. So uh, hopefully I'll get some more to show you with a bit of luck off and I'll get some action shots too. So for now, thanks and see you later. Okay, so we've got the first big one of the season. Rolling meat. go with a 14.3 it's slow this morning only had one bite and that was a five pounder give it an hour to rest add some breakfast and then i'll just add this one there we go actually crack it for you see how the rest of the day goes the third one of the day after a real struggle for no bites since this morning uh, this one's on 11.2 so hopefully we'll get some bigger ones later today so it's half four in the afternoon now. I've managed to have an 11-2 that you've seen previously and another three singles. It's not been easy today. It's up to about 29 degrees, really hot. The level's right. Uh, the fish just don't seem to be there or they're not feeding, but you know, I'll keep plugging away. I just sat here having a tea break, so I thought I'll answer some of the questions I get asked about rolling meat. So one of the first ones is, how do you know how fast to roll it? Well, that's something you can only do when you, when you get down there and practice yourself. Uh, and, and you just judge it until you start getting bites. I like to like it to go at a reasonably slow pace uh, and just, just trickle it through nice and slowly. So I set the plasticine and, and the shot to, to achieve that. Uh, another question I get asked and a mistake I used to make myself was if it gets stuck on a rock, do you try and lift it over? And that's what I used to do before I started to um, catch fish, basically. <laughs> and, and the answer simply is no. If it gets stuck, leave it. Because that's what would happen naturally, especially in a weir pool. So when mine's trundling down, all of a sudden it comes to rest against a rock. I'll leave it there for 20 minutes to half an hour. And more often than not, it will go off. Because that's what happens naturally. The food comes down, gets caught on a rock, caught on a snag. And the fishes know where it is and they come down and pick it up. And bang, you got him. So the, uh, the quick answer to that is no, leave it. 20 minutes, half hour. If you haven't had a bite then, then just reel it in and recast. Uh, yeah, the other one is, um, I get asked all the time, is how do you tell what a bite is? 
Well, again, that's only something you can do with practice. So bites, line bites, and then the lead stroke class C bouncing along the bottom all feel different. Um, I use main line, I use mono, sorry. Um, some people use braid. With braid, you'd, you'd get a lot more um, um, through the rod because there's no stretch in the line. But further mono, it's just understanding which is which. And again, it's practice that tells you that. The bites are normally pretty distinctive, but sometimes a line bite can feel like a bite, and then you end up foul looking them, which is what you don't want to do. Because one, you're bringing the fish in backwards, and two, you're potentially scaring fish away when you don't need to. So understanding those is only something you can do with practice. But get out there, have a go. It's a brilliant way of fishing. Nobody's catching nothing today, but I've managed to have five through the day. Um, so you're catching fish where nobody else is, and you just go to sleep at night. You don't have to worry about fishing. You've had enough through the day. It's a brilliant method, especially in the summer. Get out, have a go, enjoy it. Having a bit of a slow day, but I think I had nine now. Um, this is the third double. 11 pound exactly. They just keep plugging away and you do get bites eventually. Yeah, 11, 11 pound, about seven o'clock in the evening, so I've got a couple of hours to go. Another one, hard fighting fish. Getting a little run of them now. 10 pound 13. Hopefully I'll get a couple more for the evenings out. Still very spawned out all of them. Nice to catch them all the same. So I've had a, a decent sleep, I've not been particularly well, um, so I've stayed in bed. Started fishing at 8 o'clock after a cup of tea and a chat to the other lads. First cast, this was around 13.10. The swim's been well resting overnight, so it's well worth doing it at times. There you go, first cast. 13.10, see if I can get another one. Morning darling, looks like this has put an end to my action shots on the video. Absolutely hammering it down. Uh, time for a move I think, I get the opportunity between the shells. Love you baby.